Ooh, we got an update. We got an update. This one is for the Korean server. And trust me, this one is one of the more exciting ones. So, let's go. First of all, the new continent Sierra has been added. I've tested it out. I've checked it out a bit. I don't know it's good to call it a new continent because, yeah, as you can see, there's literally nothing here. Uh, basically, there's a town where you can find all of the NPCs like with any continent. So like exploration, storage, all of that. And then there's two dungeons. So this is a dungeon and this is a dungeon. There's like no mobs to AFK farm, no various like gathering stuff. It's literally just two dungeons. I don't know if they will expand it further. But yeah, for me, it's it's hard to call it a continent because there's literally nothing here. But still, it's pretty cool. Uh, the main story has been extended. There will be two dungeons. I only got into this one yet. And let me tell you, come to us. It's a fun dungeon, but... Oh, I have some beef with you. If you fail this dungeon at any point, you are brought back to the very beginning. Cutscenes and all of that. Like, you have to talk with NPCs, you have to watch every single cutscene and it's not skippable. And the dungeon is like at least 10 to 15 minutes long. And it's it's not easy. Especially, like, you will not complete it the first time, most likely. But it's cool. It's cool. I don't mind it, yeah? A little bit of a challenge is always fun. I haven't gotten to this one, but I will potentially make a video if these dungeons are any interesting. Uh, Summoner's Pass. Oh, this one is a big one. I see it doesn't mention it, but uh, the main story is essentially an Act 8. There are a total of 8 missions. The worlds are very, very similar to the Act 7. You essentially get 5 Light and Dark Scrolls and 10 Mystical Scrolls at the very last quest. So again, on all 4 summoners you will be able to get 20 Light and Dark Scrolls. And I think one of the rewards is also a Purple Tear Artifact. So uh, you are potentially getting 4 of those for every summoner. But summoners, but this, this is sick. This is amazing. So for this one, you are essentially getting new quests. Uh, they are very similar to the area of exploration quest. Uh, they are summoner based, but uh, you are doing various quests for that specific summoner instead of doing quests in a specific area. So it's very similar to that, but it's not in a specific area. It's just like... Uh, reaching transcendence levels, uh, crafting runes, all of that stuff. And I will show you a little bit of rewards in just a second. Okay, and now let's look at the new stuff on the phone, right? I mean, I'm recording it separately, but it will be put in the video. So first of all, the summoner path uh, quest. So this is what it looks like. It's basically another tab in the uh, quest menu. And if you look at this, uh, yeah, the rewards are looking good, right? And I will inform you of even cooler stuff after that. So for the first one, it looks like the quests are simply to reach a level 5 transcendence. I believe on my account, I already have that. So I can pretty much just claim all of the rewards here. As you can see, the rewards are pretty good, pretty good. Oh, I didn't reach a level 5. I do have it, so I'm not going to claim it for now. We'll leave it uh, for later on. But yeah, if you look at the quests, uh, let's look at the other one. So this one, Devilmon, five-star ticket. Oh my, I just realized. Okay, wait, you will love this. You will love this. Don't worry. Uh, powerful equipment. So yeah, it looks like equip a gem to a five-star hero weapon. Still unsure what the other ones will be, but the rewards are six purple gems, six purple sunstones, six purple moonstones, and three blue artifacts. Cool. Uh, room power, so equip galaxy stones. So yeah, just basic power up uh, quests. So this is six galaxy stones, six purple spell books, a wind leaf, and a defining catalyst. Pretty cool. Summoner power. Now this is reach active skill level six. I could possibly complete a lot of these. So yeah, uh, six energy runes, six rage runes, five weapons of each element. What are the bonuses of this? Increase summoner attack. Okay. And yeah, looks like I cannot reach the last one just yet. The last one is reach active level skill. Yeah, I don't have a uh, level skill uh, on this Orbi at least. But yeah, uh, for this one you would get 
the sub weapon and a set of accessories okay spires of ascension so still unsure how much you will need to complete level one is uh floor 10 third challenge you get 3 million gold 300k sky stones 12 purple gems 12 galaxy stones 12 spell books and a transcendent scroll wow that's some good rewards symbol power so just crafting a symbols is this symbol of harmony no that makes no sense but possibly just crafting some of these symbols so there's uh four symbols and five light and dark scrolls oh my oh no oh this is okay and then artifact wow craft shiny artifact box i don't know it's possible that you may need to own like a specific artifact i still don't know the final course here but you get 45 of these power up items 40k rune pieces 10 of each of these nice and then once you craft these you can get xp potion so 130% one 150% one, one another two 50% ones and another three 100% ones and now the best part the best part of this <laughs> you can do these quests on every single summoner yes yes i tested it out i completed the first quest on soleda i am now on orbia and it was available for me as well so just to put it into perspective how many rewards you can get you will be getting for the mystical scrolls for maximization uh, of these items like banner not banner uh blessing maximization for five star tickets you can choose four net fives and when heat comes out you will be able to choose five. Oh boy what else what else what else what else for the finding catalyst a bunch of books do you realize how many books that is that's 18 books per summoner that's 72 purple books 72 effect stones oh my four transcendent scrolls 12 million gold over a million sky stones 20 light and dark scrolls because you get five from here oh boy and uh also the milestone award so 12 xp potions for 100 percent. yeah this is nuts this is not this is sick this is the best part of the update this is the best part of the update but yeah moving on uh the beast rider so there is a balance patch in this one however the balance patch is only beast riders but the buffs i've skimmed through it i didn't read too much into detail but it's a big one it's a big one so the fire beast rider though this is the mounted form uh quick connection i believe this is the first skill it is getting changed to 18 seconds and three mana finally some the same way it was actually uh, teased in uh, one of the earlier videos right and it looks like it now reduces defense with each hit um i'm guessing Previously, it wasn't each hit, it was just uh, in a hit overall. Uh, let me see, let me see. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. So the first hit granted a defense break. Now each hit grants a defense break. So there's just, first of all, a higher chance to land in. And second of all, uh, it will be potentially higher level. So level one defense break for 20 seconds. And uh, if the attack speed... Uh, of your beast rider is higher than the target you're attacking now the cooldown of the other skill will be reduced by 15 instead of 10 again like the, these these buffs are gonna be pretty game changing for beast riders definitely a uh, huge howl so now uh, the multiplier appears to be a little bit higher uh, from 506 to 63 not sure whether the speed like the attack speed multiplier was buffed but we'll have to see uh, just a small buff to the second skill and then the rider passive. so whenever you get immunity now you get three levels of fire of energy instead of two which is pretty big pretty big so yeah uh, that's the fire one there's also an ultimate so a little bit of a multiplier buff and if you have five energies or higher the extra hit will be looking like 30% multiplier higher and with 8 it's around 60 again the speed multiplier could have been uh, modified as well it's just they never write the speed multiplier so yeah that's that and then the fire beast rider in the dismounted form so uh for this one wait what 
boarding form. I let me look it up. Let me look it up. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Okay, this was a bit confusing. This was a bit confusing. So this is the dismounted form, but it doesn't uh, mention the basic attack bit. It wasn't, or rather, this is the mount form, but it doesn't mention. Wait, oh, what? Wait, nah, this is so confusing. Okay, 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 okay. This is the mounted form. So the mounted form first skill does not change. Essentially, previously you need a level 5 energy to get that max HP damage on the basic attack. That stays on the uh, rider form. But on the dismounted form, you no longer need uh, the level 5 energy of fire. The, the max HP damage from basic attack procs whenever. Right? So that's only above to the dismounted form. The mounted form still has the level 5 energy requirement. Then Predator Spear. So this is the first skill. Uh, it looks like the mana and cooldown is also getting lower, just like the uh, Rider form. And the damage... 30... Wait, is that just a 30% more damage? Whoa, that's... Whoa. whoa, that's a lot. Oh, I see why. I see why. Okay. So it recovers your health in proportion to the amount of damage. So looks like she also has vampire runes. Um, oh, it could be 30% healing. And this just being a very bad description, right? It's potentially not a 30% damage buff, but a 30% healing buff. Although we'll yet to see because there is also a passive where previously they did 50% more damage and took 40% more damage when dismounted, now it was changed to 25% damage for both uh, dealing and taken when dismounted. And also the second skill, so for this one, a higher multiplier when there's like no energy. Aha, uh -huh. when possessing fire energy level 5 or higher, cannot be strengthened. So this is a buff block basically. So the buff block is now 100% chance instead of 85 uh, the bonus hit, 40% multiplier, and this other bonus hit, around 80% multiplier. Not bad. And knowing that it's a bit easier to stack them now, it could be potentially pretty good. Pretty good. And the ultimate, again, multiplier, multiplier, multiplier. So yeah, fire, it looks like she is able to stack the energy set a tiny bit faster, especially if you have a lot of immunity buffers, and uh, she is able to do a little bit more damage. The water one. Oh, this is the one I'm kind of excited about. I'm mostly excited about the fire, not the fire, the water and the wind one. So, normal attack. Now, look at this. It targets the enemy with the lowest maximum HP instead of the enemy with the highest attack power. So, it's a good and a bad thing. Um, I mean, it's a good thing in the sense that they will most likely kill it faster, but they also a bad thing that... You can sort of play around and let's say you have your DPS unit at like 80k HP and then you build a very, very defense-based tanky unit at like 75k HP with like super high defense and the Beast Rider will attack uh, your defense-based tank. So we'll see how it plays out. I have a feeling, yeah, I don't know. I, I like the highest attack uh, targeting a tiny bit more, but we'll see, we'll see. And also, uh, it looks like they have removed uh, the requirement to, uh, what do you call it? They removed the requirement to have energy in order to have the bonus effect. So again, uh, this is the... Mounted form. So yeah, a uh, heal block with for 10 seconds with 15% chance but you no longer need to have the level 5 energy of water. Now, Fatal Link, this is the first skill, and they made this skill on 3 mana and 18 seconds as well. This is big, because this is sort of like the main setup you can do damage. Uh, a lot of strippers uh, suffer from a condition called uh, too expensive skills, and it looks like this will be one of the few abilities that are able to strip at 3 mana. So, yeah. 3 mana strip, it also targets the lowest maximum health target and it strips one effect with 100% chance now instead of the 85. Also, aha, second skill, so cooldown stays the same, 
So with this pair to the, yeah, again, targeting the lowest maximum HP instead of the highest attack. And if your attack speed is higher than the enemy's attack speed, the cooldown of Fatal Linkage, which is the first skill, is reduced for each hit. So yeah, it was reduced by 15% instead of 10% now. So in total, you can reduce it up to 30%. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. This skill also removes two buffs instead of one now. And it has a higher multiplier. Wow, that's a very big buff to the water one. Now the ultimate, it looks like it's just a damage buff. Damage here, damage with 5 energy and 8 energy. Not gonna look too much into that. Rider form. So this is the dismounted form, right? They are very confusing. I'm sorry, like they are very confusing. So the dismounted form. Okay, so normal attack, it will target uh, the lowest max HP as well. And it looks like the heal block was added to the dismounted form as well. 15% chance for 10 seconds. No condition, anything like that. Oh no, she died, but yeah, basically no condition anymore. No condition. So targets max HP, lowest max HP, and no condition for the heal block. Pretty cool. First skill, also reduced to 3 mana. And yeah, looks like the healing. Yeah, I I'm guessing this is... It's very hard to say whether this is a 30% damage buff or this is like 30% healing from the damage, right? Yeah, so I don't know how for God it's, I literally have a Korean account. So I checked it out and yes, this is not a damage buff. This is a, a lifesteal. So basically you lifesteal for the 30% of the damage you do. And it looks like instead of the 65% chance, the crit damage uh, taken up is now guaranteed at 100%, which is... Like 65, how was that even going through the release stage? Like, damn. But yeah, and for the ultimate, again, just pretty much the damage buff as well. And when possessing two energies or higher, you do a double strip instead of a 70% chance at one strip. So that's a massive buff. Uh, the Venge, this is the passive. Again, the damage taken and dealt was reduced a bit. And the ultimate, again, just multipliers for uh, the damage. Wind Beast Rider. Okay, so the riding form. Uh, again, targeting lowest maximum HP. And uh, increasing the ultimate gauge, right? Looks like you still need level 5 energy or higher for the ultimate gauge, right? I mean, it would be a bit too OP if it didn't, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, first skill, so the same thing as the water one. It is now 3 mana, 18 seconds. Targets the lowest maximum HP. Uh, it removes one buff with 100% chance. Keep in mind, this is a double hit, so in total it will remove two buffs. And uh, the crit damage was buffed from 70 to 85. Was that the same for here? Oh, it was 85 on this before. This one was only 70, but now it's 85. Very weird. But good thing they equalized it a bit. Uh, second skill approaches the enemy again with the lowest maximum HP. Uh, it's a damage buff. Skill cooldown level 2 for 14 seconds. So from 85% chance to 100% chance. And uh, defense reduction also from 85% to 100% a chance. And for the ultimate... Again, uh, pretty much just multipliers, so uh, the base damage if you have uh, level 5 and level 8 energy. Now, dismounted form. Attacks with the lowest HP. Now, this one, with the dismounted form, her basic attack becomes insane. So, she no longer needs level 5 energy in order to boost the ultimate gauge. So, yeah, if you make her somewhat tanky and you just let her pound... With that basic attack, you're going to charge your ultimates very fast. Uh, first skill, 3 mana, 18 seconds as well. Target's lowest maximum HP. 30% uh, lifesteal from that. And the 65% chance to land crit damage was buffed to 100% as well. And the second skill, damage buff, damage buff, damage buff. Nothing too special here. The passive also reduced to 25% and the ultimate damage buffs as well. So is that 130? I mean, the ultimates with the dismounted form are not that good. So uh, light one, light one. 
uh, this one you will only see in text because in the way it will appear in your account. So uh, the rider form, it targets lowest maximum HP, okay. And when attacking, there is a 15% chance to reduce critical resistance instead of now requiring level 5 energy. Again, good buff, good buff. That level 5 with the coin, it was just a, a bit hard to stack. It's it's a cool mechanic, but it's a bit hard to stack, so I can see why they're buffing it. Uh, first skill, again, buff to 3 mana, 18 seconds. This skill is the same as the water and the wind one, so there's not too much change here. Looks like, yeah, 100% chance to strip instead of 85 now, but it is a double hit. So, yeah, very similar to that. Uh, second skill. Our target's lowest HP, and it looks like for this one only the damage was buffed. It was buffed quite a bit, though. 70% per hit, so that's close to 150 uh, in total. Not bad. And the ultimate, uh, also just the damage buff, it looks like. Now the dismounted form, target's lowest HP. Uh, the effect for lowering is also changed to no longer require the level 5 energy. Uh, first skill, also 3 mana, 18 seconds, lowest maximum HP, 30% lifesteal, and 100% uh, chance for the critical damage, same as the other two. The second skill, okay, lowest maximum HP targeting, cool, and a damage buff, that's a big damage buff. I think the damage buff is to compensate for the passive, right? Because most of the damage buff, like, uh, the damage will sort of remain similar, but they will just take less damage. So I think that's the direction they were going when buffing all of the damage, right? And the ultimate big damage buff. Woo, look at that. 1,200. That's a big multiplier. And it also, wait, that, that's not the final one. That's the best part. It also bases on um, attack speed. And it also has, like, if you have energy defense penetration, like, it's nuts. This The light one's ultimate I really liked in the very beginning, yeah? Okay, and the dark one, so the rider form, uh, now when you have level 5 energy, uh, there's a 25% chance to transfer a debuff to the enemy. It still requires level 5 energy, which is the main problem I have with it. Because on the dark one, it is super hard to stack this energy. Uh, the first skill, so the first skill is uh, similar to the fire's first skill. Uh, it basically has a 100% chance to grant defense reduction now instead of 70%. And cooldown of uh, the second skill will be reduced to by 15% per hit instead of 10. So that's a total of 30, I believe. Yeah. And uh, the second skill, just a damage buff. Uh, then if you have level 5 energy, the defense break goes to 100% chance instead of 90 and if you have level 8, uh, you also deal block beneficial effect, and that is 100% instead of 9. So not a big buff to this skill, just a little bit of damage mostly. And the ultimate, uh, again, just a small damage buff to it. Now the dismounted form, uh, there we go, no longer a requirement. Whoa, that's gonna be OP! Imagine just... With like 300 attack speed, you are potentially transferring one buff every like two seconds, if not more. That's pretty good. That's, pre that's pretty much means that you cannot debuff her in a way, right? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like it. As at the first skill, again, 30% uh, vampire effect from the skill. And a defense break level 2 for 20 seconds instead of defense break level 3, but with a 50% chance. Any day, I'll take that any day, any day, 100% chance, 50 was a joke, 50 was a joke, but yeah, love that, love that. Second skill, uh, damage buff, then if you have level 5 energy, 100% chance instead of 90, and 100% chance instead of 90, same way as with the uh, mounted form, damage buff, and taken, reduced to 25 as well, and ultimate buff, the damage okay pretty cool i think this will make beast riders very 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 meta this will make them very meta we'll see now for other significant changes i'm not covering a lot of quality of life stuff especially when it's not that important like this is quality of life but i am gonna cover this because it is important 
So you can fuse up to 10 runes now. Basically, whenever you craft your runes, you were only able to do it one at a time. Now uh, you are able to do it up to 10 times at once. So, oh, this is a big change. And yeah, it looks like uh, this is possible for emblems, gems, magic books, effect stones, galaxy stones, and artifacts. Love that. Love that. Honestly. <laughs> Also, the Summoner Pass, I know I didn't make a patch video for NA on Global because there was no maintenance, but uh, the new Summoner Pass will be the 5-star Water Beast Monk. It's both the same for Korea and for us, so keep note of that if you haven't looked it up uh, before. And now, oh boy, I don't know if you, I mean, pay to win folks will be excited, but a new Battle Pass is being added. So this is a Battle Pass for Battlefield. I'm obviously not gonna buy it because I barely play Battlefield as it is. I've looked at the awards and they, they are pretty good. They are pretty good. So first of all, you will be getting 1.5 times more rewards from the Battlefield itself. And also uh, the amount of items you can purchase in the Battlefield store will be increased by 1.5 times. Now, here's the thing. I don't know the price yet. I can only check it in the Korean server, but the price is two times more expensive than the Arena Pass. So potentially this could be a $20 or a 20 euro purchase. So, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I, I will showcase you what uh, content you can get in the battle piece, uh, like in a few seconds. Okay, now the Battlefield Pass. So once you enter the Battlefield screen, you can see there's a new tab. Uh, there's also a new tab called Friendly Battle, which I didn't mention much, but what this means is essentially you can set up a friendly Battlefield match. Uh, I can see this being used in various like tournaments of stuff, so that's pretty cool. I feel like it wasn't as significant to cover in the main one, but yeah, it's there. You can make a friendly Battlefield battle. But the Battlefield Pass, so let's look at the rewards. Uh, the three rewards include uh, three purple books. That's not bad, you know. Uh, a purple, or rather a blue artifact. Another three purple spell books and a blessing marble. And now the paid one includes a legendary spell book. A purple artifact. Wow, that's a lot. Another legendary book. And a maximization marble. Hmm. I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. And yeah, as you can see here, there's also 1.5 times Battlefield rewards and victory points, limited to 21 per week, so basically 3 per day. And uh, 1.5 times purchase count of season products in the Battlefield store. So what could those be? Let me see. So potentially you are getting... Ah, I see. They are listed here. Okay, so... You're most likely going to get another Defining Catalyst. You can buy another 15 of these, uh, another 25 of these. Uh, you can potentially buy either one or two extra Devil Mons uh, for the five-star ones. Uh, about here, you can potentially buy some of these boxes. So probably one or two extra of these, six of all of these. Outfits are not going to be limited, of course. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, personally, if it was... 10 euros or 10 dollars i could see some value in this but at the current prices i don't know it's 22,000 like korean currency what is it like one or something uh keep in mind the prices in korea are a bit cheaper than in global nna but it looks like it is double the price of the arena pass so arena pass for us costs around 10 dollars or 10 euros depending on your region this is double that. So for me, personally, I feel like it's a bit of an expensive purchase to justify just for a few legendary books, especially since I don't use them much either. So yeah, I don't know. Okay, and some artifacts. So three new artifacts are being added. So one for night type, support types, and archer type. So the night type, uh, whenever you apply a CC effect, uh, it increases your defense by up to 900. Oh, oh, whoa, imagine that on a Fire Paladin. If Fire Paladin wasn't OP enough, let's make it even more OP. Yes. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. This is a this is a strong one. 
This is very similar to what uh, the purple artifact looks like on mages and warriors, right? So, ooh, scary. Uh, support time, dispelling a teammate's buff. So basically a cleansing a debuff uh, increases that target's resistance from 20 to 40% for 4 seconds. Mm, I mean, it's just 4 seconds, not too horrible. But if you have a lot of cleansers, like, are there cleansers that can proc like every 4 seconds? I don't even know. Yeah, I'm not sure, not sure. And they have to be a support them. So hard for me to imagine what you would use this too much on like obviously for cleansers there isn't much they can use apart from that so we'll see i mean these are hero grades so they are gonna be hard to acquire we'll see archer type uh when a critical hit occurs from a skill attack your skill cooldown is reduced from 10 to 20 percent even if a critical hit is inflicted on multiple people with a single target uh it only works once yeah when from a skill attack though i mean it should be good for units that are off souling right because uh for souling ones you really don't care about the cooldown so oh i don't know for archers i prefer to use artifacts like the attack enhancement one where you get like 40 percent more damage from basic attacks but 20 percent less from uh, skill attacks but we'll see we'll see We'll see how this plays out. Also, there's a small teaser for uh, the next TOA. It will be Wind Element. I think, where is it? Yeah, three types of Wind Attributes. So most likely going to happen the same in Global and NA as well. Now this thing. I don't know if this is a bug or they forgot. But uh, look at this sentence. Collaboration items will now be sold at general merchandise stores. This means that... Potentially, you will be able to get skill ups for the four stars and five stars from the One Punch Man, and four stars and five stars from the uh, Tower. What's it called? Like the Tower collab, right? Where Nadine Ha came from, all of those. But I looked at the shops. Uh, it did say the general shop, and there's nothing there. So I don't know if they forgot to add it. If they do add it, I will try to mention it in one of the videos. Yeah, but for now, it's not there. It looks like. And the next news is the 5 star Fire Harp Magician. Let's read their skills in game right now. And yeah, apart from that, there's a small event once the Sierra Continent opens. Uh, there's two pages of it. First week looks like this and the second week is very similar except uh, this becomes a Devilmon. And the rest of the words uh, from what I'm looking are pretty much the same. Yeah, so only the last thing changes and it will become a 5 star Devilmon. Apart from that, it's pretty much just bug fixes from what I'm looking, like arena fixes, robot fixes, nothing too special there, right? So yeah, pretty decent patch, pretty decent patch. Beast Rider buffs, hopefully we already get the buffed version so we don't have to wait another month for them. The continent, a bit disappointing, I don't know. Um, Battlefield pass. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to feel about it. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts about this patch. And yeah, peace. Okay, and now let's look at Harmonia, the Fire Heart Magician. So, first of all, first skill, nothing special there. First skill, Healing Music. Plays a beautiful melody to the more harmful effect on allies within the area and applies immunity. In addition, the covers HP of allies within the area. So, one cleanse. Yeah, one cleanse, immunity, and 24% heal. Wait, that's a very good skill. That is a very good skill. Wait, let me check Wind Undyne, right? I know Wind Undyne has a very similar skill. Let me see, let me see. Look at that. Why? This is 5 cost. It removes one harmful effect, immunity for 14 seconds, 22.6% healing. And here... They move one harmful, 24% healing, immunity for 14 seconds. I mean, immunity only happens if you remove an effect, so there's a downside to that. But if there are harmful effects, if you feel like you will always have harmful effects, this skill is super good. This skill is really, really good. Okay, nice. And now, unwanted harmony, second skill. 
decreases the enemy's HP, increases its HP ratio based on the decreased HP ratio, and increases the skill cooldown. Oh, word salad, but we'll see. So even HP ratio. So the way it works, I'm gonna base it from a Sky Arena. Essentially, let's say the opponent has 100% HP. Uh, someone on your team has 30% HP. Wait, let me see if it's your team member or just her. Uh, decrease the enemy's HP, increases its HP ratio based on the decreased HP ratio. Um, it's hard to see whether it works only on her or any team member on your team. But let's say the enemy has 100%, you have something like, let's do 20, it's a bit easier to calculate. Uh, so even HP ratio means that both of them will become equal. So both of them will become at 60%. And on top of that, 22% uh, two of the target's max HP as fixed damage. So it will reduce 22.2% uh, as fixed damage from the enemy. And for you, it will recover 32.1% of the target's HP. So it's pretty big. It's pretty big. I like it. And the ultimate all on one at harmony. Okay. This is a portion of the enemy's HP and increases the HP ratio of allies within the area based on the reduced HP ratio. Okay. So. Even HP ratio, again, it equalizes. I, I think that's how it should work, right? It's hard to say, because there's like, uh, there's also Chesun who does uh, a very similar skill. Let me see how she is worded, because it's a bit confusing. So, hmm, she does have even HP, but it does say based on high HP ally. Huh. See, I, I don't quite know whether it will be even as in lower the enemy and increase your to that point, or it will be just decreasing the enemy, or it will be just increasing your HP. It's very hard to tell with this description, but I will try to test it out uh, once she is available in the Illusion Garden. But yeah, for the ultimate even HP, 30% of max HP as fixed damage and 38% of healing for all allies. Keep in mind, this one is an AoE heal instead of just being a single target one. So, pretty cool unit. Potentially pretty good with units like Cliff, uh, units like the Water Beetle, maybe, uh, where they drop you to very low HP because of that Endure buff, and then you are able to just not only heal yourself, but also uh, damage the enemy quite a bit. So, yeah, we'll see how this one plays out.